What is good Neo family, it's Ray J back with another video and in this one I'm going to be talking about the one only Neo stock and what you should be looking out for for the future. I'm also going to be talking about some very important warnings that I have for all Neo investors out there because there are very important indications coming out that we could see some very, very, very interesting price action. Now before I talk about what Neo may do for the future, what these important warnings are, before I talk about what Neo put on their Twitter page, which is once again very bullish news, I do have to mention a couple of things real quick. Firstly, I'm not a financial planner. Don't take any of this as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please smash the like button if you want to see more videos like this. It not only benefits me, it benefits the entire Neo community as a whole. And the last things, if you guys can, please check out the Moomoo link down below and in the description. If you sign up for Moomoo, the link down below and deposit $100 into the account, you're guaranteed up to 10 free stocks, each worth up to $2,500. And the best part is, out of the 10 free stocks, the five the first five are going to be chosen by mumu themselves but then the next five are going to come from this wheel right here this means that you could win five free amc shares five free apple shares five free tesla shares and so on and so forth it's a limited time offer it ends in just one week check it out before they run out with that out of the way let's get on with the video so looking at neo this thing is currently just a little bit in the green we're about two minutes before close and right now we're actually look like we're going to close in the green so that's good to see neo closing very close to the green but there are some important things i want to talk about that are very important for all neo investors now let's get one thing straight in my opinion the long-term future many years in the future i'm very very bullish for neo i see this thing breaking all-time highs i think i i see this thing just soaring to the absolute moon but for the short term for the short term maybe we have a little bit more room for upside for next week maybe this thing is going to push up but i do see <clears throat> the market i see neo dropping even more why do i say that why do I believe that by the time we get to the third week of July, maybe the fourth week, it's very likely we're going to see some downside in the markets? I believe this based off many signals, many indicators, and what's going on with the context. So first off, looking into around the second to third week of uh, July, maybe more towards the third week, we have a lot of these earnings coming out. And the markets, big institutions, they're looking at these earnings they want to see how are these companies doing how is the market holding up and they're going to judge the market based off this if big tech companies like apple amazon google tesla if they report bad earnings near the third or fourth week of july it could have a negative effect on the markets it's going to be very important what if Tesla announces that they, they're having a lot of trouble with their revenue or things are not as good as before or something like that? The market could respond negatively, for example, or for Apple or, or another giant like Amazon. Additionally, we have this right here. By July 26th through the 27th, we have the next FOMC meeting. And right now, something strange is happening. Many people are speculating that Jerome Powell is going to raise the federal funds rate by another uh, 75 basis points. So another 75 basis point hike, in addition to the quantitative tightening continuing, with the Fed being, being even more hawkish, it's very possible the market could take a hit because of this. Now, when it comes to the overall technical setup, what's interesting is the SPY and the NASDAQ, they tend to be correlated. They tend to run very similarly. So right now, when, when we look at the SPY, it closed a little bit red, and you can see the 390 range is strong resistance for it. The SPY is having trouble breaking through 390, 393. If we do break it next week, if the SPY could break past 393, this thing might fill the gap at 400. It's possible. Is it likely? No, it's, it's unlikely, but it's very much possible if we get en enough momentum. The only thing that concerns me is that volume, <coughs> excuse me, the volume is just nowhere near what it should be. I mean, look at the volume. You can just see it's declining already. It's not looking too good in my opinion. So from how I'm seeing this, let me just draw this out for you. If the spy is going to get rejected here, it's going to start dropping from here. If the spy has enough momentum and somehow pushes next week, it could fill this gap. But if it fills the gap, judging current market circumstances it looks like it's going to drop again where is it going to drop to well the truth is we have a gap down here 
Gaps are typically indications of what stocks will likely do. Most of the time they do get filled. There are circumstances where they don't get filled, but most of the time they do. This would bring the SPY to that $368 range. So the SPY is most likely going to drop relatively soon, regardless of if we fill the gap up here first or if we're about to get rejected. As a result, that's a bearish indication for the markets. Now for NEO, what does this mean? So what is going on with NEO? And this is where things become very interesting. NEO has been respecting a bit of an upward trend over the last couple of weeks. And I could actually draw this out for you. From 11 bucks all the way up to here, we saw this thing just push up and up and up. It was a monster. And we're kind of, or we've been kind of respecting this channel right here. It's kind of like this. Kind of like this. I mean, I'm just doing this roughly and quickly for you. So for NEO, it could head towards 27 if the market becomes insanely bullish, if the SPY fills the gap to 400 and so on and so forth. But regardless of that, whether we're going to get we're going to get rejected here because NEO is showing some weakness, it is possible for this thing to start dropping first and it doesn't actually go that high. So either way, if NEO does push up, I see this thing dropping again. If NEO doesn't push up and it just stops here, I see it dropping as well. They're pointing in the same direction because what I think is most likely going to happen is NEO is going to maybe push up a little bit, then it's going to start dropping as we approach maybe the later days of the second week of July up until the third week of July. I'm seeing some bearish price action. NEO has this gap right here. The gap will take NEO down to that 20.8 range, maybe lower. And if NEO could hold 20, What's interesting is Neo has all these gaps down here. I mean, there's another gap at 19. Another one at about $16 a share, right? And there, there's also another one. There's no guarantee that this one will, will get filled though because it's pretty far down there. Let me see where it is. I think there's one that's like really low, like right here. There, uh, It's right here, there. This is like... What is that? Like $13 a share. So Neo might end up dropping pretty hard considering all these gaps. Now, when it comes to gaps, a lot of people thought, oh, remember that time when Neo made this gap right here down to like $15? Like right here, look at this. This was back in March. And then when Neo was at like 15 bucks, after it bounced off 13, it pushed all the way up to $24. And people were probably thinking it's so bullish right now. Everything's awesome. But it had this gap down here back in March of this year. And what happened to NEO? Look at the share price. It tanked and it filled the gap that was all the way back at 15. And it continued to drop down to 11. And it when it was dropping, it formed gaps up here. See how it formed a gap at 18 when it was dropping, it forms a gap at 14, and that's why I turned bullish. And we could see Neo had pushed up slowly and started pushing up all the way back, filling all those gaps up to $24. But now we have these gaps telling us that this thing is probably going to drop again with the market. When is it going to happen? I don't truly know, but it seems like it's going to happen near the second half of July. I've said that so many times. It could start as early as next week. So to me, it looks kind of bearish. The market does look like it's going to see a bit of a hit relatively soon. I wouldn't be surprised if NEO does start dropping with the overall market. That's my view, right? If it happens, don't worry. This thing has the potential to see a nice bounce. I do think the market is going to recover eventually. Neo is going to recover. So we probably have a very good buying opportunity. Why is the market going to drop this hard? We have earnings coming out. We have data. We have CPI coming out. We have the Fed meeting, the FOMC meeting. We have the GDP report. So many things could be catalysts that could drive the market down. It's the uncomfortable truth. I know it hurts, but the long term, for years to come, I'm still very bullish for Neo. Look at what Neo put on their Twitter page. The 10 millionth battery swap Neo Power Day is the 1,000th. They're talking about the 1,000th battery swap station. They're 500 kilowatts ultra fast, 
ultra fast charger and the third generation of Neo battery swap stations. And now they're charging in Europe. It's going to be for free for their Norwegian users for a limited time to address flights delays. So huge news. They're doing amazing things. And I'm still very bullish. All right. I'm, I'm super bullish for the long term future. For the short term, we're probably going to see some bearish price action. That's as simple as I can make it. But that's said and done. Thank you for listening. I'm not saying the bullish price action is going to start next week or on Monday. It may take some time, right? I'm inclined more towards thinking that about the second half of July. I think that's going to be even more bearish for the short term, right? It could push up again. If the market's super bullish just one last time, it could go as high as 27. I mean, that's very unlikely, but it's it's possible one last push before we start dropping. But either way, whether we push up or not, whether we drop from here, it looks pretty bearish for the next, maybe I would say within the next month or two, I, I could see it dropping, but it doesn't matter. Still very bullish long-term. Thank you for listening. Have a great rest of the day. Enjoy your weekend and I'll see you guys in the next one. Neo to the moon and peace out.